Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your weekly encouragement. On the news this week, I saw a very interesting piece of footage. It was a family that was uh, fighting, actually, like fist fighting. Um, what I found very interesting about that was not the violence. I'm not particularly into that. However, they were at Disneyland, currently thought of as the happiest place on earth. Now, they claimed that they didn't fight or quarrel at all. And then the video comes out of them clearly like throwing punches at each other. Um, I'll put a little clip here, hopefully without all the violence. Most of you guys don't want to see that. However, having said that, that got me to think about how we do deal with quarrels in our life, especially when it comes to fighting over things that we either desire or want, how our pride gets in the way. And that brings us to James chapter four. There's a couple of very interesting things that I think James does with this idea of quarreling, fighting, <clears throat> and conflict. So I'm gonna read it and we'll put it here. It says, what's the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is it not the source of your pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and you don't have, so you commit murder. You are envious and you can't obtain, so you fight and you quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. What I find most interesting about this take from the book of James is that when it really boils down to what we argue and what we fight about, it's usually because I want the thing and I can't seem to get it. James calls it lust here. And I think we think of lust as sexual all the time. That's not exactly um, what he's saying. It's actually much broader than that. We want something and we can't get it. So we fight amongst ourselves. He also mentions that you're envious and you can't obtain. So that's why you fight and quarrel. You don't have because you don't ask. So that is my first question for you and for me is when I feel like I need a thing and I'm willing to go out and fight for it and put my fist down and yell and scream. Have I actually asked? Have I asked the Father to provide that need for me? Have I even realized that it's a need? Or do I just let my anger run away with me? He continues on in verse three. He says, you ask and you don't receive because you ask with the wrong motive so that you may spend it on your pleasure. You adulteress, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Now, you can really take that verse and run with it. You can begin to separate yourself from everything you consider worldly. And I, I, I want to caution you just a little bit in that because we're supposed to be in the world and not of it, right? So we do have to engage with people who are not believers, people who are not of the faith. Yet, if that is our entire drive, if we're driving towards the things the world has to offer, then we are setting ourselves up in direct opposition to the Father. And that's the caution I want to bring forward. In verse five, he continues. He says, do you not think that the scripture speaks to no purpose? He jealously desires the spirit which he's made to dwell in us. He gives us a greater grace. Therefore, it says God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. It's very easy for me to stand here and say, you need to be more humble. It's a lot trickier when I look into my very own life and say that I, Pastor Cat, need to be more humble. That is a lot trickier because if I'm honest with myself, I like to be right. I, I like to let people know that I am right. And if I'm not careful, that pride will really seep into who I am. And the last thing in the world that I need is God to be opposed to me. He finishes up this idea with verse seven. He says, submit therefore to God, resist the devil, he'll flee from you, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, sinners, purify your hearts, you double-minded, be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. That's the last thing I wanted to point out. When you set yourself away from those things, when you purify your hearts and refuse to be double-minded, you humble yourself before God, he will exalt you. If you feel like you're putting down by all of society and you're um, behind the eight ball financially and emotionally and relationally, maybe, just maybe, your real issue 
is you have not humbled yourself before your God. I would love to chat with you about that. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to engage with you. If you're struggling with anger or strife or conflict or uh, quarrels among you and your neighbors, I would love to pray for you. Go ahead and put your request there and I'll get right to it. God bless. We'll see you next week. Be encouraged.